So I think we start. Uh, welcome everybody who is uh, uh, in presence uh, and online. Um, today, uh, connected from uh, Torino, we have uh, Matteo Ferrari. He uh, is a third year PhD student in the Technico di Torino. And today he will uh, talk about the non-symmetric cutting for exterior problems in particular results on the stability and uh, a virtual element approach. So uh, when you want to start. Okay, thank you, Ariel, for the introduction and uh, for the possibility to talk here today. As you said, I am uh, Matteo Ferrari, PhD student from uh, Politecnico di Torino, Italy, under the supervision of uh, Professor Silvia Falletta and Letizia Scuderi. And today I will talk about uh, some results obtained during my PhD about this uh, non-symmetric coupling to solve uh, exterior boundary value problems. The, the talk is essentially divided in uh, three parts. The part zero, an introductory part with the, the notation, the model problem, and the definition of this uh, non-symmetric or sometimes called uh, Johnson and Edelec coupling. Then a first part, a first big part, uh, where I will talk about what is new and what needs to be done on the stability of the continuous formulation of this coupling. And a second part where we will propose a numerical scheme based on the coupling between the virtual element method, VEM, and boundary element method, VEM. And I will show some numerical results. Uh, notation. I will consider for this talk an obstacle, omega zero, bounded and uh, Lipschitz in R2, and uh, let's call it boundary gamma zero. And it's complementary in R2 omega E. Uh, once for all, before starting, uh, the theoretical results of the first part hold as well for the three-dimensional case. It's even simpler. While the numerical scheme of the second part is specifically thought for dimension two. It is still an ongoing work such a discretized scope coupling for R3. So this is why I stay in R2. Uh, the model problem I consider is located in this exterior domain. This is why I call it exterior, exterior domain omega e. And uh, the, the PDE I consider is the following, divergence of uh, a grad u equal minus f. Well, f is a first term in L2 and a asymmetric and uniformly positive definite coefficient matrix. Then we have a zero Dirichlet boundary condition on gamma zero and a radiation condition at infinity to guarantee the unicity of the solution. I am defining here also this lambda min A, the, this uh, infimum over X of uh, the minimal eigenvalue of A that by assumption is bigger than zero. And uh, I will define this uh, I define this because this will be one of the main characters of the stability analysis. I will recall the definition, but this will be very important. Last assumption, typical in the coupling world, we suppose that the support of F, as well as the support of A minus the identity, uh, are bounded in this exterior domain. In other words, from a certain point, the, the, this PDE is the, the Laplace equation because this will depend on the Laplacian and this is zero. Okay, we want to solve numerically this problem in some way. A first approach, a common approach is a boundary element method. The idea is to reduce the PDE to a boundary integral equation on the boundary and then to solve this equation and compute the solution everywhere in the domain with a post-process post procedure. Okay, there are many reasons for which this may be difficult. The first uh, example is that dealing with non-constant coefficient can become a problem. This is because we need to know the fundamental solution of the governing PDE and uh, in general, for general A and source term, this uh, may be very difficult. And a second approach to deal with non-constant coefficient uh, can be the coupling. And this is what I will talk about, the coupling of a domain method with a boundary element method. The starting point of, there are many couplings. The starting point of each of them is to consider an artificially, artificial boundary, let's call it gamma. 
And uh, uh, to decompose the exterior region with the, this gamma in two parts, uh, fine at one that I will call omega, that includes the non-constant coefficient and the source term, and a residual domain, for me, omega infinite. In this way, in the residual domain, the PDE is the Laplace equation. By hypothesis, we can choose such a gamma, and we, once for all, fix this gamma. The idea is to split the global solution as the sum of two functions, uh, one with support in omega and one with support in the residual domain, two unknowns, this u and u infinite. The function u is the solution of the PDE in omega, exactly the PDE as before. Well, now u infinite is the solution of the Laplace equation, the simple equation in the residual domain. Then we have some other condition. Again, the Dirichlet condition for u, the radiation condition for u infinite now, and then some transmission conditions for the trace and the normal derivatives, these to guarantee that the global solution is at least H1 locally everywhere, also near a gamma. The idea of the coupling is to solve this interior PDE with a domain method, such as FEM or VEM, or more in general with a method that can deal with non-constant coefficients, and to reduce the exterior PD to some boundary integral equation in the spirit of BEM, boundary element. Why I say some boundary integral equation? Because uh, there are at least two uh, well-known couplings that uh, differ for the number of equations we consider. The non-symmetric or called uh, Johnson and Alec or one equation, uh, this is what we consider. In this, we have only one equation. While there is, uh, on the other side, the costa Bellan or symmetric, with two equations. Um, okay, why I uh, talk about this non-symmetric? Because uh, uh, this is in the name. Uh, from a computational point of view, we have only one equation to discretize. So we have less things to compute with respect to the costa Bellan. And in particular, as I will show, we don't need to discretize a complicated boundary integral operator, the so-called hypersingular, that on the other hand appears in the costa Bellan coupling. However, why we have the costa Bellan? Because from a theoretical point of view, the, the analysis of the Johnson and Lec is more difficult. This is a non-symmetric uh, system in the end, and we can't derive the coercivity and stability of the, of the system in a direct way, as in the costa Bellan. So let's say the Costa Bellan has, has a very strong theoretical analysis behind it. While we have some open questions also now for the Johnson and the Lec. Uh, so Johnson and the Lec, we consider this one. We, we need the one equation on the boundary. Uh, we reduce uh, the Laplace equation to this boundary integral equation on gamma in the sense that if u infinite satisfies this PDE, then the trace of u infinite on gamma and the normal derivative must satisfy this boundary integral equation. Uh, this equation involves, uh, so the normal derivative of u infinite and the trace, this can be uh, written in terms of the trace of u and, of, uh, and the normal derivative, let's say, scaled of u on gamma with the transmission condition. So before defining this v and this k, let's just do a manipulation. We use this transmission to rewrite this in this way. This is really my one, cons one equation I consider. Uh, and now v and k. v is the single layer operator, very common in the boundary element. Okay. Mateos, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but uh, uh, I'm really sorry, but I have to understand uh, this idea. Can, can you go, go one, sli one slide, one slide back? Yeah, because I just want to understand the flow of setting. So you have uh, so the first equation, uh, the divergence or something is defined on x, x, x in omega. What do you mean by x uh, in the second equation, uh, uh, the Laplacian equal to zero and x in, in omega infinity? What is omega infinity? 
omega infinite is the residual domain. Okay, but uh, okay, but uh, okay. So so omega union omega infinite is basically the whole space R minus omega zero. Minus omega. Yes. 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 I split the the complement I of omega zero in omega and omega infinite. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, just one trivial question because for boundary value problems we just have the at the datum and this is you are considering outside as well. What is the motivation behind this? Why do you need the? Uh, what is the motivation of this? To split in these in two domains. No, considering such a problem to have uh, considering the is caused on the issue. Okay. This is the nature of these problems. Okay. This is and the issue that you cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah this is interesting. Uh, please, please, please carry on. Please carry on. Sorry. Uh, okay. So I had to understand. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Here. So we have this uh, one equation. Uh, we have V and K. Uh, v is the so called single layer operator. And this is an operator between h minus one half and h one half. This is uh, the definition. We take a density and we compute the duality pairing with the fundamental solution of Laplace equation. This is the fundamental solution is in uh, L2. And k is the double layer operator. This is uh, again uh, essentially a duality, a duality pairing, but here with the, the normal derivative of this kernel. So we take a h one half function and we have an h one half function here. So we have our interior PDE that we want to solve in omega with the non-constant coefficients and this uh, equation on the boundary. And uh, uh, we want a variational formulation. So what we do, we test the PDE with a function in uh, this subtle space, H1 with the zero Dirichlet condition on the interior boundary gamma zero. We integrate by parts and we have something like this. This is just for the notation. A U V for me is the bilinear form associated to the divergence of A, so A grad grad. This brackets the duality pairing between H minus one half and H one half. And for the boundary integral equation, we simply test it with a function in H zero minus one half, where this H zero minus one half is the subspace of h1 h minus one alpha with the zero average on gamma i will specify in a moment why we need this space before this we have a system two equation we need two unknowns for the moment the only unknown is u we need to decide who will be the other unknown and the natural unknown is this n time a grad u if we call it lambda my final uh, formulation is this we look for u and lambda such that these two equations are satisfied and in the end lambda will be will be this n times a grad u. Uh, last thing why we have this space h0 minus one half because lambda is this normal derivative this is uh, uh, associated to the normal derivative of u infinite the solution in the infinite domain and by the addition condition a posteriori, we will have that this normal derivative satisfy this condition. So uh, to test with a function in the same space, we take mu in exactly the same space. Okay, so the, this is the end of the part zero. This is my coupling. This is, uh, this is not new, this is the John friend lack coupling. What we will do is to study the stability and to discretize this by means of the virtual element method. Uh, okay, let's start uh, with uh, part one. The main question is uh, when this coupling is stable in terms of the data. So gamma, the artificial boundary, gamma zero, the physical boundary, and A, the uh, diffusion matrix that here is hidden in this bilinear form. And uh, as I said, a very important character is this minimal eigenvalue of A. Let's see the history of the results on this problem. The first result was obtained by Johnson and Nedele in the pioneering paper. If the artificial boundary is chosen to be smooth enough, 
then when A is the identity, this coupling is stable. We have one and only one solution uh, with uh, continuous with respect to the source term F. Uh, however, this is not a, a good result because everything works when gamma is a polygon, so only Lipschitz. And we need to wait 30 years to have a new proof. And this was obtained by Sayas in uh, 2009. It is enough gamma Lipschitz when, again, when A is the identity. Then Steinbach obtained a quantitative version of this result. He proved that uh, it is enough uh, indeed, uh, okay, gamma Lipschitz, but uh, with a general A, provided that the minimal eigenvalue is bigger than one divided by four. But again, this is not uh, the best we expect because in the practice, everything works always. It is enough that A is uniformly definite positive. So the minimal requirement we expect is lambda minimum of A bigger than zero. Another small improvement was done by Office Steinbach two years later, that now if the minimal eigenvalue is bigger of this quantity, now we have one by four times this CK, where CK is a constant that I will specify in a moment, but uh, let's see that this is between one half and one. So in general, this is a smaller number than one by four. To, to understand this, uh, uh, let's trust me, but for the circle, CK is one half, is one half, exactly one half. So for the circle, before we, we had lambda minimum of A bigger than one by four, with this result bigger than one over eight. So this is an improvement, but again, this is not optimal. We expect that for all A, such that the minimum value of A is bigger than zero, then the coupling is stable. And the new result that I will show you today is this. Okay, again, gamma Lipschitz provided this new uh, estimate on the minimal value of A. If the minimal value of A is bigger than this new quantity, then the coupling is stable. Okay, now uh, it's not clear uh, a lot of things, for example, it's not clear that this quantity is really smaller than this. Hmm? I have a graph here. We compare uh, the function y equals ck and this strange, strange, strange new function. And we see that for all ck between one half and one, because ck that I will specify later is a constant between one half and one, for all these values, this orange cur curve is behind this blue one. So this is really an improvement. We can allow for smaller eigenvalues of A with respect to the previous lower bound that we had from office time back. Moreover, we have a good thing here. When CK is equal one half, this condition reduces to lambda minimum of A bigger than zero, the case of the circle. In this case, we have, we, we have the conjecture. For each symmetric uniformly positive definite A, the one equation coupling is stable when gamma is a zero. So we have done a very small step, but this is a new step. Uh, a qu another question before going into the details is why to uh, try to improve this type of results? Why do we need uh, to allow for very uh, strange A with this uh, eigenvalue very small? Okay, uh, if we are solving problems in uh, heterogeneous regions, with some uh, jumps of this again value, okay, then this is really important. But in, in my case, I have a more precise reason because uh, using a generalized Galerkin method, yeah. a Galerkin when we approximate uh, the bilinear forms other than the Sobolev space, and uh, let's say that uh, we approximate A with AK, where A each a mesh, H is a mesh parameter and K the order of the method, for example, in my, in my mind, I have the virtual element method that I will show you later. Then if we approximate this grad grad in this way, by some representation theorems, we can do something like this. So we can say that there exists a discrete operator, AHK, depending now on the mesh and on the order, such that, this, that we have this representation. And even when A, when here we had the identity, now we can have a very strange discrete operator. Mm. And we can't provide in general, nice lower bound for the minimal eigenvalue of this discrete diffusion matrix. Mm. 
uh, okay, it makes sense then when h go to zero, then the minimal eigenvalue of this a h k must be bounded from below. But for a larger k, it may happen that uh, this uh, eigenvalue becomes really small. For example, uh, in the basic version of virtual element method, there are results that uh, allows only for estimates like this. Uh, and you can see that when k, the order of the method, becomes uh, a large number, this can become really small. And we don't want any restriction on the positiveness of this discrete matrix. Yeah. OK, this is the motivation behind this type of uh, analysis that may seem so, so only theoretical. Uh, now we show the idea of the proof of all these proofs, also by Johnson and Alec and by Offer Steinbach. And I will show you how was the new idea. How is what is the new idea? This is again the, the system of the coupling. Let's consider uh, a linear combination of these two equations by summing the first, the first equation, the first, uh, let's say, left hand side to beta times the second left hand side. Uh, for some beta, beta defined from zero clearly. If this bilinear form is coercive or random for some beta, if there is a beta such that this is satisfied, then the coupling is well posed. Uh, okay, so uh, the point is to, to find a good beta to understand uh, what we can do. Uh, in the pioneering paper by Johnson and Edelec, they considered beta equal to. With beta equal to, here, we have uh, this uh, compensation here of these two and one half. And if we insert uh, V mu equal U lambda in this bilinear form, here we have exactly minus lambda U and plus lambda U. We have this good cancellation and it remains only two terms, an elliptic term and a compact term. A compact part uh, only if gamma is smooth. This is why they need gamma smooth enough and not only Lipschitz. If gamma is Lipschitz, this is not compact. So they need the regularity of gamma to prove that A2 is random. Okay, but they have decided to, to take beta equal to. Maybe there is a better beta. And in fact, uh, the result of Steinbach was with beta equal one. He simply considered the sum of the two equation, this bilinear form, and he proved that this bilinear form is not random, is directly elliptic if the minimal eigenvalue of A is bigger than one by four. And the result by Open Steinbach uh, was simply uh, the sharper version of this, again for A1. They considered again the sum of the two equation, and they included in, the, in this estimate this CK. And this is now very sharp. They have some numerical examples in which they show that if this minimal eigenvalue is smaller than this quantity, then this, this binary form is not elliptic anymore. So this is very sharp for A1. And the question is, okay, uh, John Frederick have decided for beta equal two, Steinbach and off beta equal one, but maybe there is a better beta. So the idea is to, uh, to improve these results, is to study everything without choosing beta, only in the end. This is uh, quite uh, tedious and technical, but in this way, only in the end, we can choose a precise beta, a precise scaling parameter, depending maybe on, uh, on gamma, on uh, the physical boundary, depending on uh, all the data, because now beta is not depending on the data, is one or two. But uh, having everything, depending on beta, only in the end, we can find the optimal beta, beta star, to have the best condition in terms of the minimal eigenvalue of A. And this is what we have done, what they've done. So now, what is a CK? This is an open question for the moment in this talk, let's say. CK is, depends on the elliptic properties of the single and hyper-singular operator. V, the single A operator I defined before is elliptic in this H0 minus one half, H0, the zero average on the boundary, on the boundary. And let's say this is elliptic with the uh, ellipticity constant CB. The hyper singular operator is a new operator. This is the definition. This uh, is the operator that appears in the Costa Bellan and not in the Johnson and the leg. 
And this is quite tedious because uh, the, there is a, a singularity inside here that is uh, bigger, let's say, more dangerous than the one in the B and K, in the single and the double layer operator. This is an operator between H1 half and H minus 1 half. In fact, here we have a normal derivative also outside. But from, uh, in the theoretical analysis, this is important because this is elliptic in this particular space, this subspace of H1 half. Um, elliptic, uh, let's define the ellipticity constant CD. So we have CV and CD. This space, H0, 1 half, this is the, the definition, but we can observe that this is exactly the image of H0 minus 1 half with respect to V. In other words, V, the single layer operator, is an isomorphism between H0 minus 1 half and H0, 1 half, because this is elliptic. And with V, so we can define two equivalent norms in these two spaces. And with these two norms, V and V minus one, we can, uh, we, can, we can look at this theorem, this very important theorem by Steinbach and Wendland, that uh, this theorem says that uh, the shifted double layer operator is a contraction in this precise space with the uh, this precise norm with the v minus one norm. And finally, CK is the contraction constant of this operator. And this is the definition. This depends on the elliptic, ellipticity constant of the single layer operator and the double layer operator. We can see, oh, and hyper singular, sorry. We can see from the definition that uh, this is something between one half and one, because uh, if uh, this product is zero, then we have one half, so one. Okay. On the other side, when CVCD is equal uh, one by four, then this is zero and we have one half, the case of the circle. This is the CK in the results by Steinbach and Dorf, because this is a very important tool in the proof. And uh, the first step going to a generalized version of the results by Steinbach and Dorf with the general beta was uh, a generalized contraction property depending on beta. And this is exactly uh, the results uh, that uh, one can obtain. If beta uh, is a constant satisfying this inequality, then this new shifted operator, depending now on beta, is again a contraction in the same space with the same norm, depending on the V minus one, with a contraction constant that now depends on beta. When beta is equal one, this is exactly the same back and then that one. With this in mind, having proved this, we can prove the main result. If beta is bigger than zero and in this strange interval, then if the minimal eigenvalue of A is bigger than this quantity, when beta is equal one, we have CK squared, so CK divided by four, exactly the off and back result. So this is really a generalization with the general beta. If this is true, then A beta, the linear combination taking the first left-hand side plus beta times the second left-hand side of the coupling, then this is elliptic in this space, the good space, with this ellipticity condition. Here we have this C beta star that is a precise computable ellipticity constant, and we can verify that, again, this is really sharp like the result by Hoff and Steinbach, if the minimal eigenvalue is smaller than this quantity by fixing a beta, then this is not, uh, this is not anymore elliptic. Hmm? So this is very sharp for each beta. I have done a lot of numerical uh, tests and this is really sharp. Um, second remark, okay, now we have everything depending on beta. We can try to minimize this quantity by, uh, choosing a good beta in this range. And uh, uh, the optimal beta is this. One can do some easy calculation. Uh, with, with this beta star, we have the result that I said before, the new improvement on this uh, stability condition. Uh, okay, now this is, uh, this, this now depends on gamma because it depends on CK, that depends only on gamma. And you see that uh, this condition is uh, optimal for the circle, as I said, bigger than zero, but it's not optimal in general. We expect that for all curves, the bigger of zero, yeah, or zero, 
the, this is the conjecture. Okay, last observation. Let's uh, take one step back. We have a question. So, so this essentially depends on the on the on the shape. Yes, depends on the shape. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, the, the, let's say the worse uh, the um, the shape is, more CK go to one the, on the eccentricity. If we have a circle, then CK is one half. If we have an ellipse very long, CK tends to one. Yes, depends on the shape, essentially. In fact, for each circle, it not, does not depend on the radius of the circle. For each circle, CK is one half. But again, when you solve in the worst case, or say CK one, uh, numerically, things. Still Everything work. works, always. Yes. Yes, yes. OK. OK, how to try to prove uh, uh, the conjecture? This is just, uh, these are just some remarks. Uh, let's consider, again, the, simply the sum of the two equations, the offense time back linear form. And let's call this A, just for a moment. Um, OK, our A beta, the sum of the first time beta, the second ones, is simply this A composed with a multiplication here with beta. So proving the ellipticity, the coercivity of this uh, a beta is essentially, is exactly showing the coercivity of this composition, where this uh, t beta is the multiplication in the second factor. Okay, this is just in other words what we have done. And again, in other words, uh, we have proven the t coercivity of this operator a. t coercivity is a word uh, from uh, the, the, the group from Paris, uh, and the decursivity is an, uh, a good tool uh, where the freedomness of decursivity is hidden. The decursivity, this is the definition, a bilinear form is said to be decursive if there exists an isomorphism such that uh, the composition between this bilinear form and the isomorphism, then this is coercive. Uh, this is useful in some cases because uh, this is uh, exactly equivalent to the instability condition. And in some application, uh, they, they have a lot of application, uh, time harmonic, Maxwell, uh, some uh, elements with non-constant coefficient. In some application, the things are easier to be proved with respect to the instability condition. And uh, so the final conjecture that I said uh, at least uh, three or four times, uh, is that for all A, everything works, for all gamma, works in the sense, in other words, that A is decoercive. Why I say this? Because I have found an easy T. I have uh, found just the multiplication by this beta. But maybe there is a, a more complicated one, a combination of boundary integral operators, something more complicated, such that uh, the stability is preserved for all gamma and not only for the circle. That is uh, what we have at the moment. OK, now we start the second part. This was about the stability. In the second part, I will propose a numerical scheme to discretize this coupling by means of the virtual element and boundary element method. The following is based on works in collaboration with my supervisors and with Luca Desiderio from the University of Parma. And for simplicity here, I will suppose A the diffusion matrix equal the identity. Everything can be done more in general, but the discrete setting changed. It, it is more complicated. So from now on, A equal the identity. The classical way to discretize uh, this coupling is to use fan bam We want to use a VEM, virtual element, and BEM. A vem bam coupling uh, has been already done and analyzed for the Costa Belan coupling by Gatica and Medai both for Helmholtz and Laplace equation. We have done the same in a series of paper for the Johnson and Nedelec one. A first preliminary paper without me with some numerical example and the description of the numerical scheme for Helmholtz. Then everything has been theoretically addressed in this second one, again for Helmholtz, including the possibility to deal with curved boundaries. Then a theoretical analysis for the Poisson problem allowing for the first time for different order of approximations. And finally, a numerical scheme also for the wave equation. 
combining this uh, discrete coupling with the convol UBIC convolution quadrature and the crank nicholson scheme. I will focus on the third paper. So Poisson, this uh, divergence of grad U and the different order of approximations. This is where we focus. Motivation, why to use virtual element instead of finite element? There are many motivations, very standard motivation, let's say. Among the other, VEM allows for general polygons without the drastic modification with respect to triangles. VEM can be easily, from an implementation point of view, extended to curvilinear elements. And uh, again, from an implementation point of view, also extended to high order of accuracy. These are common reasons. A hidden one that, however, is very useful in our context is the following. That VEM, virtual element, allows to use polygons with consecutive edges with an angle of 180 degrees between them. Like in the figure, this is a square, but we can see this also as an hexagon with three consecutive edges here on the same line. This is useful in our situation, and I will explain in the end why. Notation. Uh, this, our discrete formulation is exactly like this. We have uh, two independent degrees of accuracy and two independent meshes. One for the interior domain and one for the boundary. One associated to virtual element and one to boundary element. We will apply a generalized scalarking method. So we have the subspaces of these overlap spaces, Q and X. We have an approximation of A, of A, this is why we have generalized, and an approximation of the L2 scalar product with F. This is just the setting. So we have four ingredients, these two spaces and this approximation. First, the virtual element space. This is very standard. This is like in the pioneering paper, except that I allow for the curved polygons. This is the reference paper for the curved version that I consider. So let's take a tessellation of my interior domain, omega, the domain with the all, because we have omega zero inside, uh, eventually with the, some curves near the boundaries. For each element of the tessellation, we define a local virtual element space that is the subspace of H1 with the function with the Laplacian in this specific polynomial space and that restricted to the boundary of these uh, local elements are again polynomials. The only exception, if uh, an edge is curved, is that uh, we need, we, want, we, we define this in such a way that not the function is a polynomial on the boundary, but the composition between the parametrization of the edge and the function. This must be a polynomial in the parametrization interval. This is the only difference from a curved and not curved version of virtual element. Uh, let's observe that in the polygonal case, not in the curved one, only in the polygonal, uh, in this space, we have polynomials of the degree K-circle. In fact, the Laplacian of a polynomial of the degree K-circle is a polynomial of the degree K-circle minus two, and restricted to the bond, a polynomial is a polynomial, clearly. However, we have some other function. One can compare the dimensions of the polynomial space and this space, and we have a gap. Mm -hmm. The idea is that uh, we can't and we don't need to know explicitly each function inside the E. This is why we call it virtual. And, uh, on, but what we do, we approximate the involved linear form in a consistent and stable way, in such a way that uh, using only some uh, unisolvent degrees of freedom, then these bilinear forms are computable. This is the general idea. Uh, a standard choice of degrees of freedom, that is exactly what we, what we did, is this, uh, the point evaluation on the vertices. Of the, for each function, we define a set of degrees of freedom. The point evaluation on the vertices, the point evaluation in distinct point on each edge. In this way, uh, since on the edge of n function is a polynomial, we know exactly uh, the value of the virtual element function on each edge, only not in the degrees of freedom by unisolvents. And, the and the finally, some internal moments with the polynomials in the same space uh, as the Laplacian of the virtual element functions, these K-circle minus two. 
the global space uh, is obtained glue, uh, gluing everything uh, in a conforming way. Yeah. Okay. From this, maybe it's not directly clear, but the idea is that with these degrees of freedom and using integration by parts, we can compute uh, some bilinear forms associated to the grad grad. Yeah. In fact, in, in, the idea is that integrating by parts, so we have a uh, Laplacian part that uh, is uh, hidden here because we can compute this and a boundary part that we can compute here. Um, the key point, in fact, in, is that we can compute using the degrees of freedom explicitly the following operator. This is a local uh, projector orthogonal with respect to the energy scalar product in the polynomial uh, of degree k circle. This is the definition by fixing here in some way the constants. And with this, the proof of this can be found in the Ichikas guide, for example. Knowing that this is exactly computable, we can approximate the bilinear form with this. First, we decompose the bilinear form in local terms, and then we define the approximation. This is the standard way to do this. We have a consistency part, this is exactly the grad grad, not on the function, but on the projections of the function, plus a stabilization term. There are many possibilities here for the stabilization term. Uh, even if we know that there are better choices, we have done the, we have used the Dofi Dofi, the so-called Dofi Dofi, simply the sum of the product of the degrees of freedom. And for our examples works. Um, from a theoretical point of view, why everything works with these uh, with these bilinear approximated bilinear forms essentially for two properties the name of the two parts we have the consistency with polynomials if we test with a virtual function and the polynomials then the approximated one is exactly the grad grad of these two and then a stability and continuity with respect to the h1 seminorm Okay, with this, uh, we can prove uh, the convergence estimates. Um, these are the results for the, for the coupling. Mm -hmm. If uh, gamma, the artificial boundary, is smooth uh, enough, uh, then we can apply the freedom theory. As I said in the first part, it should be very good to have some stability properties of the continuous problem without any restriction on the minimal eigenvalue mm -hmm, of the discrete matrix. But since we don't have this, we, we need to take here gamma smooth enough. Mm -hmm. And this is also, again, a motivation to use this curved version of the virtual element map. So we assume gamma smooth and uh, we use the freedom theory. Uh, if gamma, if H circle and H partial are smooth enough, the two uh, meshes parameters of the two interior and boundary meshes, then we have a unique solution. We can apply, uh, we can use a discrete in condition and we can prove these optimal convergence estimates in the energy norm with two different here order of approximation. One from the VEM virtual element and one from the boundary end. The same for the L2 norm. We can prove that we have exactly what we expect, a plus one here. Okay, I didn't specify. Sorry, but uh, maybe I, I missed it, but I, did you talk about the discretization of the band? band? No, 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 exactly. I, I didn't say anything for BAM because uh, it is uh, really standard, but I will uh, say something later in a, in a moment. Before this, uh, just a numerical uh, test. Then I will specify everything also for BAM, for boundary elements. Uh, just uh, an easy example. Uh, this is this is this will be the example for all the numerical tests. So uh, I will uh, specify precisely what is this. We take uh, omega zero a circle with radius one, artificial boundary again a circle with radius two, and we solve this problem with this data. These are three meshes obtained with G mesh, refining by splitting. Um, Okay, for these first results, before saying anything about the, bond, the boundary element, I take exactly the same degrees of accuracy. I want to test the global convergence, the global convergence, just to verify the main result. So here there is a virtual element of order two, and 
uh, of order three, two and three, and we have in the L2 norm with respect to H, the, the say only one H, because we have the same degrees of accuracy, we have the rate three and rate four and rate two and rate three. Okay. This was obtained without the coupling, the order of approximation. Now let's see the boundary element space. This is uh, the standard boundary element is defined as uh, like this. We have uh, polynomials on the boundary satisfying this zero average condition. This is exactly the band space we consider. We, here there is a minus one because we are approximating a normal derivative. So to obtain the order k partial, we need the polynomials degree k partial minus one in the energy norm. Okay, this is again the discrete scheme. And now I want to, to, motivate, to, to, to motivate why to take different orders of approximation. Let's have a look at the matrices of the discrete scheme uh, of the band. Let's define phi, the, a basis of the virtual element and var phi, a basis of boundary element. Sorry, this the, is the mate. Yeah. Sorry, the tilde means uh, uh, after mapping. Ah yes, yes, because uh, okay, maybe this is a, a this is a curved boundary. Yeah, this is a, a the like before. Okay. Maybe it's a polynomial composed with the parametrization. Yeah, 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 exactly like before. Um, okay, these are the two matrices that we need to compute in the BAM uh, setting: k associated to the double layer operator and v to the single layer. V is associated to to BAM boundary function, while K to a VAM and the boundary function. And this is very important. Uh, these are singular or narrowly singular integrals because these kernels, here we have a log L uh, singularity and here are one over L singularity. Now, two remarks. Uh, we don't need any regularization techniques to compute K, but we need them for V. Even if key in K we have one over L, we have a compensation by the normal direction if the boundary is smooth enough. On the other side, we don't have this for B because this is simply the integral of G and the two boundary function. And these regularization techniques are quite difficult. And from an implementation point of view, this may become very complicated for a polynomial, let's say, with degree larger than two, so order three. However, we have the BAM BAM boundary boundary only in V, the one with where we need the regularization, where we have also a VAM function is in K here, only here. So we can increase the, we can take different order for VAM and BAM here, because we don't need any regularization. Here, if we add a VAM function, say we want to use a VAM with order four or five, this was a uh, master, uh, could have been a real problem if we uh, add here a function, a virtual function. But we have only here, where we don't need the regularization techniques. So what is the idea? If we use a BAM mesh inherited from the VAM1, this is exactly what we do in, the, in our GMesh meshes, we expect up to a certain level of refinement that the global error is something like this. In this, I also write that the, the boundary parameter for me is exactly one half this H circle. Okay, so this is the global error. So what we expect? I am doing nothing very, very strange here. I'm simply doing, okay, let's use our meshes. Let's not do any drastic modification. And let's see what happens with different order of approximation. And we can do this. We can do this because we don't need any regularization techniques for K. And let's see here. Yeah, I have fixed a boundary element method of order two. So polynomial of degree one. And I have tested with the, Three meshes, not uh, so much because we don't expect this uh, uh, for all the meshes, only for the first steps. But for these first steps, uh, we have these two, three, four, five, that these are only the orders of the virtual element. Here we are losing something because from this point, uh, the BAM error is, uh, is too big. Hmm? 
Okay, and these results are good in our opinion. Also these, here we have a plus one in the BAM, so a BAM of order three with again different type of virtual element. And we preserve the virtual element error up to a certain level of refinement. These are good and validate the decoupling the orders without any modification of the mesh in general, maybe not be a bad idea. However, the, the, the optimal thing is try to balance in the, the two errors. We are, we are not doing this. We are simply taking our meshes and try to decouple the, the method. But uh, better results can be done uh, modifying the meshes. Mm -hmm. And here is the last virtual element motivation. We have these two types of errors. Now, two very independent meshes, not like before the inherited one. Um, <clears throat> okay. Okay, no, sorry, 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 sorry. And let's say that we want to use the inherited one, okay? This is, this is, these are the two terms of error and we want to use the inherited mesh from the interior one. Okay. And as I said before, we want to use a low order boundary element with respect to the virtual element. We can do this because in K we don't have the regularization techniques. And um, an easy way to drastically uh, obtain a small mesh parameter on the boundary without recombining everything is simply the, the addition of uh, some hanging nodes on the boundary edges. Mm. We can see the, now these polygons as before, not quadrilaterals, but maybe here uh, with five edges. We have in this way obtained a very smaller mesh parameter on the boundary. And so these two errors can become balanced with a very high K circle here and a small K partial here. This is uh, something that we can do with virtual element to consider this polygon with these uh, hanging nodes inside. And this was my last, mo the, the motivation of, uh, again, of the use of virtual element. And this was my last slide. Here is the bibliography. And thank you for the attention. Okay. I've done. Thanks, uh, Matteo, for uh, the talk. Uh, do, if uh, anyone has questions, you are welcome. Uh, okay, maybe uh, I would like uh, to ask you something in the yes. previous slide where you say you can uh, both inherit the interior mesh and but uh, also refine the one on the boundary in this way. Uh, I mean, once you have a discretization of gamma, you don't use uh, the geometry anymore, right? I mean, when you when you split one element on the curve, you don't adjust. You keep it flat. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. We, we only use the we only use the parametrization. Say so, yeah, we split in the parametric interval. Okay, so because okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, is it, if you consider maybe also for other problems, these are the uh, traps type uh, virtual elements. Um, I saw that you mentioned uh, Helmholtz, maybe, or, or, uh, or Wave, I'm not sure, in your other papers. Yes. No, sorry, what is the question? If you consider also coupling uh, using uh, thread type. Uh... Ah, okay, yes. We, we, we are actually working on uh, coupling with the, the plane waves virtual element. Yeah, yes, that's the one I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, are, we are doing this. Uh, we are doing this and uh, it works for the moment. Yeah, yeah. Both, uh, but both uh, virtual element and boundary element with plane waves to have uh, like orders in both the direction. Yes, but everything works. Yes, yes. In other words, oh, yeah, uh, I remember um, these uh, fan band methods of uh, Baser in particular and other people. And uh, back at the time when I was reading these papers, they 
it seemed to me that solving this, uh, you know, BEM was uh, more or less, I don't remember exactly how I convinced myself about this, but maybe you understand that. It is about, uh, in a sense, uh, using a virtual element in which uh, you, you actually do the work of solving the local PDE to get your basis functions somehow. You see what I mean? So you yeah, do- Yeah, I, I know the, the works by Vessel, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, but they compute everything uh, explicitly. This is the, the, the different thing with respect to virtual element. Exactly, exactly. So, but since you do the BAM and then you couple it to BAM, I was wondering, you know, if you can somehow take advantage of the fact that the, the two methods are, are really close to each other in this sense. Oh. Uh, yes, I see. No, the, the, the problem with boundary element is that we have uh, not only integrals involving the, the virtual function, but also the kernels. So we can do some type of approximation like in the virtual element. Uh, in the Vester papers, they compute, uh, they solve this local Laplacian problem uh, by computing everything uh, explicitly, uh, but they don't have this type of kernels inside. Okay. Uh, no. yeah. That's very clear, thanks. Okay. You mentioned at some point uh, uh, about the lambda mean of virtual elements that can be of the order of uh, k to the minus five. Uh, can you say a bit more? I was a bit surprised. Uh, which one? Uh, what? Yeah, the, the, the standard one, there are, there are papers by, by, by the mascotto, I think that they 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 study the, the stability of uh, the, the the standard Doffy Doffy mm -hmm. stabilization, and they proposed a, another stabilization technique that guarantees to improve these. Yes. I, yeah, please. What? What? Yeah, yeah. We just continue. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. I don't know. No, no, I have done. Yes, yes. No, it is in that paper. I think that this can be improved. Okay. I, I, I know that this can be improved. I can simply take a different stabilization and to obtain better estimates here. But my motivation is okay, everything works also now. So I want to have a, a I don't want any restriction on this minimal eigenvalue of A. In my mind, you know, you should be able to indeed define the stabilization so that uh, so that you, you get what you expect from the, the equi equi similar uh, finite element. Yeah, 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 certainly. I, I can multiply by k the, the doffy doffy and uh, everything works. Yes. No, no, but in our experiment, we, we, we take the simplest possible choice and everything works. So uh, I was struggling trying to prove everything for the standard version without using uh, this estimate, but uh, proving a different uh, stability for the continuous Johnson and the leg coupling. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I guess we have uh, finished uh, our questions. So uh, thank you again for your uh, very interesting talk. Thank, thank you. you too. Thank you. Thank you. Arrivederci a tutti. Ciao. 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 Grazie, ciao. Oh, ciao Matteo. Ciao, 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 grazie. Ciao. Grazie.